Welcome. We have a mysterious object imaged by the Stereo A spacecraft. It has created a flurry of videos on YouTube speculating as to what it is. Is it Comet Elnin? Is it Nibiru? Is it Planet X? Is it the Death Star? Or is it a UFO? Well, we're going to find out today by going through the data and looking at it and deducing what the object is. Well, let's take a look at a video taken on the 26th of June of the object. This is the Stereo A C2 chronograph image. The sun is blocked out by the big black circle in the middle. You can see the object to the right off the western limb of the sun. Those bright rays coming out from the sun are areas of dense solar wind called streamers. Now for a magnified view of the same movie, you can see that the object changes its intensity as time goes by. And if you look just above it, you can see a faint star moving across the field of view from left to right. That will be important to remember for later. Theories are running rampant as to what this might be. Some claim it's evidence that the comet Elnin is much larger than people have been claiming. Others think it's the planet Nibiru, or a defunct brown dwarf star coming through our solar system. Yet others think it's a UFO. There's lots of information to be gleaned just from the images themselves. For example, if we assume that it is a solid body, then it must be far away. How can we tell that? because this streamer crosses over the dark part of the object, so the object must be on the far side of the streamer. That puts it at least one astronomical unit away from the Stereo A spacecraft, and as we shall see, probably much further. Again, with the assumption that it is a solid body, the shape indicates that it is a sphere illuminated on one side, rather like the crescent moon that is shown in the background here. If we look at the object over a long period of time, we find that it does not move with respect to the Sun. Here are two images, one taken on the 1st of June 2011, another one taken on the 30th of June 2011, and you can see the object is basically in the same place. The fact that it does not move, even though the stars in the background do move with respect to it, means that it must be in the same orbit as Stereo A. So it's maintaining a constant angle between the Sun, Stereo A and itself. The only way it can do that is to be in the same orbit as Stereo A, on the other side of the Sun. So that gives us not only its distance from us, but also its size. Here is the same picture, but with the solar disk inserted as a reference scale. The Sun is one astronomical unit away from the Stereo A spacecraft. So that means that the object must be two astronomical units away from the Stereo A spacecraft. As its apparent diameter is about half that of the Sun, and is twice as far away, that means its actual diameter must be about that of the Sun. Well, is it Comet Elnin? Well, first of all, it's in the wrong place for Elnin. Elnin should be on the eastern side of the Sun, not the western side, with respect to the Stereo A spacecraft. It is also at the moment about two astronomical units away. And comets generally look like this, in fact, this is actually a picture of Elnin. At the moment, it's a 13th magnitude object and would not be visible to these telescopes. So, on all counts, Elnin fails the, the test of what this object might be. The next question is, is it planet X or planet Nibiru? Well, a planet that size, that close into the solar system, would be causing all sorts of havoc already. Uh, it would certainly be easily visible. One problem with this being a planet is that the cusp is pointing the wrong way. The illuminated side of the globe should be closest to the Sun, not pointing away from it. So if this was a planet, it would mean that there was something brighter than the Sun, illuminating it from the right side of the image, not from the Sun's side of the image. So we would now have to postulate not only a huge planet in the middle of the inner solar system, also a star, much brighter than the Sun, illuminating it. Now none of that makes any sense whatsoever. A brown dwarf star makes even less sense, because it would be emitting radiation and that would be picked up, at least in the infrared, very easily. And there are many infrared sky surveys going on at the moment. So it's not a comet, it's not a rogue planet, nor a brown dwarf star. So what are we seeing? All these problems of size and distance come from the assumption that this is a solid body. But the illumination problem shows that it probably isn't. That probably means that it's something arc-shaped like this. So does that mean we've discovered a UFO? Hardly. All it means is we have an arc-shaped object 
somewhere between the edge of the solar system and the surface of the focal plane in the camera of the instrument. So the most logical explanation for the fact that the object must have the same orbit as Stereo A is that it's actually on board Stereo A. And so the most likely explanation is that there's a defect on the focal plane of the instrument. But how are we going to check that? The obvious thing is to ask the stereo team. In fact, you don't even have to do that. You just have to go to their website. This is the stereo website. One of the options at the top of the page is, do you see something strange? Then click here. If you do that, you'll be taken to a second page, which lists a bunch of instrumental defects that you have to be wary of. In this case, if you select camera defects, lo and behold, you see our old friend, the Comet Elnin. Or was it the planet Nibiru? Or was it a brown dwarf? Or a UFO? No, it's something labelled a fibre. Apparently a fibre from the instrument has got onto the focal plane and is causing this defect. If you check out some of the other options on that previous page, you can explain most of the uh, UFO videos on YouTube. For example, the cosmic ray subtraction is the explanation for those so-called fleets of spacecraft using the sun as a time portal. So most of these videos that you're seeing on YouTube are just people pulling down pieces of data that they do not understand and can't be bothered to make an extra couple of clicks to find out what the defects are in the raw data. It rather aggravates me that science is being undermined by the misuse of its data for pseudoscientific purposes. With that little rant off of my chest, then I'll wish you a good night, keep safe, bye for now.